Welcome back to the channel everyone, Worship Guy 2005 here. Before I get into the subject of today's video, I just wanted to say the Queen Mary 2 special is still going ahead. And these types of videos, these brief histories, are fillers for specials. Because specials for me right now with school, having a part-time job, and three YouTube channel, two YouTube channels, don't want to spoil anything, uh, it just takes up a lot of time. But, so, the specials take three to four months to make. However, this brief history will give you guys something to watch in the meantime. Now, with that out of the way, I'd like to introduce you to today's ship, MS Lord Selkirk II, not to be confused with Prince Edward Island's MV, Lord Selkirk. That was an interesting thing. Now, an interesting fact about Lord Selkirk is that the ship actually got me into ships. When I saw it sitting in the Selkirk Slough in 2015, which is about a block from the Marine Museum of Manitoba. MS Lord Selkirk II was the largest ship ever built between the Rocky Mountains in British Columbia and the Great Lakes, but was also the final cruise ship built to serve the Lake Winnipeg and Red River routes in Manitoba. Much about the construction and design process will be in another video. Uh, and some has been lost to time. But Lord Selkirk II was built by Purvis Navcon Selkirk Machine Works Ltd, costing one and a half million dollars. I'm unsure if that is in 1960s dollars or if that's in uh, current 2022 dollars. And some of the general characteristics of the ship are as follows. There was he weighed in at 1,000. 486 gross tons, 1,009 registered tons, a length of 176 feet, a beam, 40, 41 feet, draft, 8 feet, 3 inches, powered by two Caterpillar turbocharged D343 diesel engines, with a total of 750 horsepower. Each engine itself had 375. Each was per he was propelled by twin screws with a top speed of t around 10 knots, which is 11.5 miles an hour, or 18.5 kilometers per hour. Passenger capacity was 130, and Lord Selkirk was operated by 40 crew members. Also, if I say Lord Selkirk, I mean MS Lord Selkirk II, not MB Lord Selkirk. MS Lord Selkirk II was constructed to replace the wooden SS Kenora, which is now a museum ship at the Marine Museum of Manitoba. A video of both the museum and all of its ships will be out at some point. The Salt Kirk was launched on June 7, 1969, was christened just two days later on June the 9th, and the maiden voyage was on the 23rd of June, which is impressive considering how long other ships take, just for that maiden voyage. The maiden voyage was from Selkirk, Manitoba, to Winnipeg, the capital of Manitoba. While active, the ship carried thousands of passengers on multi-day excursions to Lake Winnipeg, beginning somewhere in the Red River, most likely around Winnipeg, I can't remember for sure, and boasted a game room, a dining room, and a lounge, where guests could enjoy some live entertainment. Some things found on all cruise ships today, in fact, all passenger ships. Some of its more prestigious passengers over the years included the Premier of Manitoba, Edward Schreiger. I'm sorry if I butchered that. I I'm sorry. Later, the Governor General of Canada, and the Governor General re represents the British monarch in Canada. So in this case, currently, uh, I can't remember who the current one is, but is represented by Queen, represents Queen Elizabeth II. And in fact, the British Queen, who is in a few months, the lo will be the longest reigning monarch of all time. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II sailed, also sailed on the ship with the Governor General in 1970, just a year after the Selkirk uh, made its maiden voyage. She was, she was originally commissioned to serve the freight and passenger service markets on Lake Winnipeg, which is a very shallow lake. Along with carrying passengers, he also had refrigerated and freezer cargo compartments 
with 120 tons of cargo and fuel capacity. But the fortunes of the ship shifted with the construction of new road access to more of the com communities along the lake and an increase in air travel. However, what helped the people get their goods in quicker damaged the ship as the need for freight and passenger service declined and a focus was put on the using um, was put on using the vessel for excursions and vacations by the early 70s not long after only a few years after her maiden voyage she was purchased by the Manitoba government in in the early 70s and was operated as part of Venture Manitoba until the 1978 season and through the 1978 season Idle for 1960, idle in 1979, laid up in Gull Harbor. She was purchased that year by a group of an, uh, by a group of by a group of investors led by Harold Einarsson. I probably butchered that too, and operated until the 1982 season. In 1983, local Winnipeg businessmen Jim Garther and Bill Harris purchased the ship and sailed her, her until 1986. When navigation, when he purchased, when he was purchased by, when Selkirk was purchased by Dr. Joseph Slogan of Selkirk, Manitoba, who operated the ship in the 1990 season. However, and it was, it was originally intended to run the ship in the 91 season, an extension of engineering and mechanical work took place in the winter, but the idol was, was, but the vessel was idle. After it was decided to run the other two competing river excursion companies, Paddle Wheel River Boats, with the Paddle Wheel Princess and the Paddle Wheel Queen, and the and River and the River Rouge Tours, which is uh, Red River Tours in French. Well, the Rouge is, anyways. Sorry, I don't know French. With their boat, the MS River Rouge, which is in fact the only one still in service today of all of them, even then hasn't ran since twenty fifteen due to high and low water levels. As a joint measure for 1991, in the face of declining passenger traffic, and they idled the Lord Selkirk for the season. Little did anyone know, he would never move again. The ship was far from its former gl glory, was broken, listing slightly to starboard, and badly rusting, and would eventually sit on the bottom, which wasn't actually that deep where it was, so it didn't sink. But it was dark, docked at the end of a slew in Selkirk, Manitoba, ever since October of 1990. And in July 2010, the ship was sold, to, was sold for scrap. However, the Selkirk refused to go up quietly. And on January 19th, 2012, the ship decided it was a good time to catch fire. And it was declared a total loss. And was unsalvageable. Arson is suspected, but that's a story for another day do with the paddle wheel princess burning uh, just a few years ago as well. Stay tuned for that. Finally, the end came. When the scrapping process finally began. Actually, quick note to the fire. There wasn't actually any fireboats up there, so they had to use fire hoses off land, and that's one of the reasons why it took so long to extinguish the ship. But anyways, back to what I was talking about. Finally, the end came. In June of 2010, the scrapping process finally began, and by the dawn of the new year, there was nothing left, except a lifeboat and an anchor, which were donated to the Marine Museum of Manitoba, and are now, now are proudly displayed there, which is only, and that is only a block away, within sight of the Lord Selkirk II's final resting place. And there's now nothing besides the lifeboat and anchor that represents that one's proud ship. Hey guys, post editor uh, Worship Guide 2005 here. I would just like to say that there will be plenty of videos like this in the future as fillers, and they'll get better over time. This is my first sort of real reading off a script. Don't really like it, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, leave your comments down below for what ship I should do next. Sorry, there's just a piece of hair on my script that was annoying me. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, comment down below what ship you want to see next. 
The Queen Mary is st- the Queen Mary Two Special is still uh going on full steam ahead, and I hope you guys like videos like these. These shorter, brief histories of they are sort of one one of those things where you can put out in a few days. You know, you guys can have them every like few weeks. I might do it weekly on them. I'm not sure, but yeah. And until next time, this is Worship Guy 2005, and I'll see you, hopefully, in another one video like this soon. But maybe even the Queen on on board the Queen Mary 2 special. That's all for now.